Hey guys, welcome to Supercars of London, day number five on the video blogs, and I'm in my famous supercar scene Pirata della Strada t-shirt, driving the Audi R8 up to Northampton, getting ready for the weekend at Silverstone. I'm currently in so much traffic on a Friday afternoon, which is highly unenjoyable, but it gives me the opportunity to, to video blog on the way up. I had planned for this Friday's video blog to be about my Army Tricks R8 and um, filming with the Lamborghini LP560 Army Tricks, which unfortunately hasn't happened due to the weather and also due to uh, our schedules not meeting at the right times, which is, which is unfortunate, but we've postponed it till next week, so hopefully we get some cool content to come. The reason why I've decided to video blog today is because I decided on Monday that I was going to do a daily video blog. <laughs> I walked into that one. <laughs> but the main reason for this video blog is we're going to talk a bit of fuel economy. Normally we see Top Gear, we see Fifth Gear, we see Chris Harris has got power sliding P1s, power sliding LaFerrari, power sliding the coolest cars in the world, absolutely nailing it out of turns. And um, no one ever hears about their fuel economy. And that's because um, they run out after about five or ten minutes and have many, many jerry cans full of fuel. Uh, just sitting at the side of the racetrack but I wanted to give you a bit of better insight into the fuel economy and if you follow me on my personal Instagram you've seen that I have done uh, 42 miles to the gallon in the R8 driving down on the M3 down to Winchester where I went to university but you've also seen me get a, a fuel range of 480 miles left in the fuel tank and that was driving to projects designed in Bristol for me to get my new wheels done so it can be done you can get a really quite good fuel economy out of this car and when you fill it up to the top it gives you an average range uh, based on very very average driving and on the stock exhaust system there's a kind of enjoying my car <laughs> I do need to start doing a reaction video so you guys can see what what I see with my eyes I need a mouth cap to film it all um, but when you fill the Audi R8 up to the top it normally tells me that I've got about 250 miles left on average. Now, if you did really conservative driving, you can get out to 400 miles like you've seen on my Instagram. But if you drive it very erratically, you could probably get it down to about 100 miles, which isn't very green. Um, well, driving this car isn't green at all, but it's less green. So I wanted to compare stock exhaust to the Army Tricks exhaust system. I've had a lot of questions asking me whether Army Tricks is better fuel economy based on the, uh, the the air flow and the fuel flow going through the exhaust, the straight pipes, all the cross pipes is apparently better on fuel. But I've noticed since having this exhaust fitted that it's actually worse. Now I'm not sure whether that's because I rev it constantly and change gear at seven and a half thousand RPM, which is highly addictive. Um, but I thought this could be a great opportunity as I'm driving up to Silverstone to talk about um, quite good fuel economy as I'm sure that uh, during the next few weeks I'll be doing some pretty bad driving fuel for fuel economy as well. Still good driving but bad for fuel. I haven't actually got the GoPro in the car with me so I can't really do mouth cam either but I know that there's a lot of love for mouth cam that's definitely going to be coming a lot more. I'm going to get a real cool mouth cam point of view and maybe drive around London or something like that and do a really cool reaction video of the whole point there because the police over there. I'll tell you what, a lot of people ask me whether I get police attention for driving a car like this at the age that I am, and I haven't even had a look um, from any sort of police car. I've never been pulled over to touch wood. Um, so, I know that there's always a first for everything, and those could be my famous last words as there's a police car right to the left of me. But, I'm just going down the hard shoulder. Oh, he's put his sirens on now. <laughs> he just started going down the hard shoulder. It's crazy. Is he pulling someone over? Yeah, he is. See, mouth cam would have been really, really good there. So now that we're starting to move, and now I'm doing 50 miles an hour in the slow lane just because I want to do a fuel saving video and, and, and let you know how good it is, how good this car is on fuel. There's a Prius! We've got a Prius next to us. 
address. Do you like my car? Uh, I like yours too. I'm joking, I don't like your car. So I've got my Google Maps on, it's telling me that I'm an hour away from my destination. My fuel, no, not my fuel, my, ra my fuel range, that's what it is. Why do I always mix up my words? It's very, very strange. Maybe it's because people are looking at me all the time and I'm the over. The funny thing about sitting in the slow lane on the motorway, a lot of you guys are going to think that I'm absolutely crazy sitting in a 420 brake horsepower Armitrix Audi R8 in the slow lane. But again, th that's the whole point of doing this video. I want to show you how good this car can be on fuel uh, because in a couple of weeks I'm going to show you how bad this car can be on fuel as well. Um, but when you sit in the slow lane, you've got so many people overtaking you and you get stared at all the time. And it's just one of those mouth cap moments. That's all it is. Alpha Cab is going to become a celebrity. GoPro, if you're watching, can you create a gum shield attachment to uh, GoPro? And then um, I'll invoice you all of the commissions that you make of it because Alpha Cab is the coolest thing in the world. Obviously, you can't talk, but who wants to hear you talk when you're doing a point of view? No one. Genius. V12 Varnish just drove past it. Up 260. Yes. <laughs> I don't think any supercar driver has ever played this game, but I'm playing it and I'm winning. So I was way too excited there. He didn't even look. I made the effort to look because I was expecting that car to look, and he didn't even look. Damn. I just got left hanging there. You know when you like do a high five and then the person doesn't, and you're just standing there like this. That's basically what happened, but in car mode give each other the high five nod like you look at each other and go yeah that's a nice car nice car that's what you would do I was going to do that to him he was driving quite a nice VW Golf and as much as I love supercars I've also got an appreciation for a good car when I see one and he was driving a nice VW Golf GTI so I was going to give him the nod and he just didn't even look didn't even look I feel embarrassed now I don't know oh a Prius another Prius I got in the MPG, which means how many miles have I got left on my fuel? 270 miles left on fuel. Oh, sign for Silverstone. Sign for Silverstone. How annoying, I'm driving past Silverstone to go back there in the morning. I haven't worked that one out. Do I have to turn off there for Silverstone? Yes! I've got, I've got to carry on going up the M1 even though that's the turn off for Silverstone. I may as well just sleep in my car, save even more fuel. <laughs> Too long, but my fuel range is saying 290 miles, which is um, better than I started on at 225 and I've probably be, only been going like 30 miles. So I've driven 30 miles, but gained 70 on the fuel range. How's that for a supercar? Eat your heart out, Prius. Lexus and hybrid cars. I just don't think it's socially acceptable to have a GoPro in your mouth stuck in traffic. As great a view it is for you, it looks really bad for me because I've got a GoPro in my mouth. Mouth cam is cool, no denying that, but is it socially acceptable? And a traffic jam in the UK is definitely a social situation. Everyone talks to everyone. Do you know what's going on up there? Have you, have you, have you heard the news? Have you heard the traffic report? What a lot of people like doing in the UK as well in really bad traffic is getting out of their cars to try and have a look 
but I never actually, I never see anyone standing on their roof, which is definitely the best view, or at least climbing a tree, because that's definitely going to be your best view of seeing as far as you can see. That's what I do, but I've never actually got out of my car in a traffic jam, and unfortunately, this is moving um, quite slowly. So again, I don't think that'd be socially acceptable to get out of my car, climb a tree to see what's happening. Man, they love that. They love this car. This situation is when the sort of car high five, you know what I was talking about earlier, the, um, but the nod, that's when it gets awkward in the traffic jam as well. <laughs> that kid liked it though. Mega bus, standard view on the M1. Yeah, it, does, it gets awkward when you nod to someone when you're in traffic because they're looking at your car and you're looking at their car and then you nod and then do you wind your window down and start talking to them about brake horsepower, power to weight ratio and how much grip you can get around a corner? Well, I don't know any of those figures for this car anyway. I just know it costs £108 to fill up, which is about 85 litres because I checked today. And um, But it's very, very loud in a tunnel. That's about as statistical as I get with an Audi R8. I can identify cars from quite a long way away and I could also identify the cars by sound and probably what aftermarket exhaust system they have. Call me a geek, but that's what seven years of supercar spotting in London does for you. But I don't particularly get clued up on 0 to 60 times. All I know is this is fast. Actually that's 4.6 because I googled it before I did the car review but I'm not supposed to tell you that. So now we are turning off the motorway. We've got 310 miles of fuel left. We're turning off the motorway now and we're going to probably hit a dual carriageway and I pray to God that there's going to be no traffic on there. Um, Take the exit on the left. And we're going to have her... Shush! Good. We're going to have her talking quite a lot. Um, and as you saw from the McDonald's video, I don't get on with her. So my sat is now telling me that I'm 10 miles away from my destination. My computer trip monitor is telling I have 315 miles of fuel left, but I've driven about 50 and I started on 220. So that's what eco driving can do in a car like this. Imagine what it can do in like a Prius. You top the car up, I know you plug it in, don't you plug it in? And then you put petrol in. But you could probably get like a thousand miles. It's nuts. It probably cost 20 quid to fill up. This cost 110 pounds to fill up, and I've got 300 miles left. Slow and steady, slow and steady wins the race. It wins the fuel consumption race. That's for sure. Unfortunately, my memory card has run out of memory. I've got a 32 gig memory card, so that's how much I've been filming. I've had to take the double-sided sticky tape off, and now you're just balancing on my dashboard, which is not ideal. So I'm gonna have to round the video blog up and sign off from day five of the video blogs. I was pulling over. I've got 325 miles left of fuel, so I think that I've done a pretty decent job in um, showing you what the fuel economy is like in the Audi R8 if you drive it sensibly, which I've been doing very much so, thanks to the traffic, but also that was the whole intention of this video. Thank you for watching. Make sure that you subscribe. We've got some really cool stuff coming. McDonald's Roulette is coming tomorrow. You'll all find out what that's all about. Um, and then over the weekend, I'm gonna be at Silverstone, like I've mentioned before, filming some pretty, pretty epic stuff. So thank you very much for watching and I will see you very, very soon. Cheers, guys.